The NNPC recently said it has released millions of liters of petrol to help crop the situation of fuel scarcity in the country. But even with the claim, we still have unprecedented amount of vehicles still waiting in long queues to have access to petrol. We are currently at um, the NNPC station here in the Kuba Expressway to ask people their situation. How long have they been here and what has been the challenges experienced while getting fuel? My name is Roger my reporting for Atlantic TV. We are in Abuja to ask these questions. Do stay with us. How long have you been on this queue? Uh, this queue, I think I'm getting to four hours. Four hours? Yes. Since morning, I'm here without fuel. I'm following the line and no fuel. We are just waiting to see if they can allow us to get fuel. Would you say this whole ordeal has been very frustrating for you because, I mean, four hours on the queue seems like almost the whole day gone. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you again. Today, today work has finished. I'm not going to work. From here, I'm going back to my house. What would you want to say to the federal government? Because the NNPC has said they have released millions of liters of petrol to Nigerians. But up to now, we're not seeing any improvement in the queues. That millions of their petrol, they are lying for Nigeria. It's a typical lie. I will say it. Anybody that is ready to, to face me, I will, I, will, I will defend myself. They are lying for Nigerians. How can they keep Nigerians for, for a queue? You keep Nigerians to buy fuel. You tell us, I think we are, we are almost one month today. Queuing every day by day. Can you imagine I was coming from Zaria yesterday to Abuja? I go to Buari. There is a, a filling station in uh, Duse, uh, Duse uh, Police Signboard. I was there more than three hours just for me to pass to my house in Ushafa. I couldn't get myself. So if the federal government should do something or else. We, the, we the, 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 the youths, will come out and tell the federal government that what they are doing, they are not doing the right thing. Thank you very much, Mr. Daudu, for your time. You are welcome. I've been here since 8.30 a.m. Since 8.30, so approximately four hours to five hours you've been on this queue? Yes, please. For like two hours now. For the past two hours. And has it been moving so far? Uh, since I came, we've not moved. Um, I just dropped my kids at school and said, okay, as I'm coming home, let me take, you know, just fill up and then get ready for the day. But I'm stuck. I can't go to the office. I can't do anything. I'm just here because I need this foil to pick my kids when they close from school, you know. And for instance, here now, I can see that just maybe one pump is actually selling. So if there is foil, why is only one pump selling? Are they just creating the artificial scarcity or is it from NNPC? So we don't even know. With the heat and everything, it's, it's terrible. I know Nigeria buys, you know, fuel from Russia. And, you know, when the war started, you know, I, what I, the first thing that came to my mind, how does this affect me as a Nigerian? Forget about, forget about who I want to stand with at this time. As a Nigerian, how does this affect me? So I began to Google what are the things, you know, that this war between Ukraine and Russia can, you know, have impact on and then impact me directly as a Nigeria. I just knew that we may still have issues with some of these, you know, fuel issues, wheat and all of that. So we, we should begin to look inward. We have everything. We should just make our system work. We should just do something. I, I'm wondering, is it that our leaders are, you know, going to build refineries outside the, the country because it's their own, then they refine it there and bring and sell to us. So we can do better. We really can. And I just hope that people would, you know, Nigerians will become more awakened. After going through this kind of suffering, you can't forget all of this and when the election comes, you say you will not come out and you put wrong people or say they will rig it. When you don't come out, they definitely would, they will definitely rig it. Because people, leaders who have their citizens at heart, who, are, who have empathy, will not treat us this way. It's just so, just imagine if I was working for somebody, what would I tell my employer? That I cannot be at work because I need to get fuel. I just have to be here. My, my kids will close from school anytime soon and 
I probably may just even go from here to even do pickup, the way his head is looking now. So we really need to consider, you know, what we need is behavioral change. We need to have people who, whose hearts are sold out to the people, not wicked people, because that is what we see. This is just pure wickedness. We don't know, and it's cascading from the top to the lower level. So everybody, you know, positive behavioral change is what we need as Nigerians. Our refineries can work if we want it to work. It's, it's as simple as that, but do we really want it to work? It just shows that we have people who don't care about us. We have leaders who don't care. And to think of it that he has traveled for Medicare for two is, is even more shameful. That our leaders will go out, you know, to get the best of infrastructure and our own system can work. So what can we do? Nigerians, we just need to wake up. We need to take this thing into our hands. We need to speak up and not forget. I don't just know. It's just, it's sad, really sad and humbling. Well, there you have it. A lot of people have expressed their displeasure with the current situation currently hitting the country. One thing is for certain, Nigerians are tired of this lingering problem. And it is high time we all join our voices as a collective to address this situation. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the program. Until we come your way again next time, please do stay safe.